When you respond to the beloved, he comes to you, you open to him. I was describing it earlier. You're in your second year in university. You're in year, year, um, uh, SS3 or SS2. You're in four like a primary five. Jesus comes to you. You're in your third year in university. You're in your your youth service. Whatever stage you were in life, you turn to Jesus. When you have that sweet pool, and I was describing a little of mine, that's when I used to say, God, I wish I could have my own room. I wish I didn't have to share my room with one of my brothers. I wish I didn't because you're there kneeling down. Someone comes in, walks past, dresses up, goes on you. I wish it's perfectly silent. So you have to lie down. You have to stay down on your knees. You want silence. Why? Because you're crying. Why are you crying? I don't know. Jesus, the beloved is here. These are my university days, you know, and you're, that's doing strike. You're at home or doing holidays. And you're with Jesus and he's revealing himself as the beloved, the one that your heart loves. You respond to it. You must respond to it. It is that response that has brought me to where I am today. Instead of turning your back and refusing, he pulls and you pull back. You don't pull back. You follow along. He pushes you. He says, hey, 1999, I heard a preacher. Preacher, I said, Lord, do you talk like this? He said, study my son. That's why I started studying. The best place to find Jesus talking is the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John talk about, Matthew, Mark, and Luke talk about the synoptic gospel, similar. You know, they talk about what Jesus did here and there. You want to hear Jesus talking, taking time, not so much doing as talking. You go to John. That's why, to be honest, it's not the first, 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 first thing you read as a Christian. Read what he did, action. You know, Mark is a, an action film. Uh, Matthew is a comparison a proof that the things Jesus is doing were written before, what you call the Old Testament. Very many are in the book of Matthew. It says, as it is written, as it is written. So it's proving. Luke is for Gentiles, which is us too. Tells you about different things similar to Matthew. But John, which was written nearly 50 to 75 years after Jesus died. You just don't know. 50 to some Very long. John didn't write it. Wrote it decades later. As the Holy Spirit reminded him. Remember, he had said that he said, when the Spirit comes, he will tell you what is to come, and you remind you of things, what I've said. So he needed the Holy Spirit to have reminded him of those things. Because he, he wrote it. Can you picture something that someone got in 1950? Then he's writing in the year now, uh, 2020. Very long time. So the Holy Spirit had to bring back the specifics. So it won't write from the flesh. And that's what you have as the book of John. And it's telling you what he said. So it's inspired. It's not just writing from the natural mind. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I studied Jesus and his words and how he spoke and how he said whatever he says. That's what the Father is saying. And I realized that, okay, I guess I beloved is a bit tougher than I thought. It's not all soft and afraid and pathetic. No, he's tough. Way tougher than I need. But I also let that pulling, responding to those pulls, having times. Some of you, when I say this, you say, okay, anytime I feel the Lord pulling me, I'll go. I'll go and kneel down and pray. Even though I'm having exams, I'll leave the exam. I'll go. You're on your own. Because some of you don't understand. That's not how. I've told you the best way to relate with God. Have routine times that you meet with him. Are you hearing me? Now, he will come out of routine sometimes. But at least have the routine early in the morning. Different times. I've spoken about how I used to have one day a week where I would fast and pray. I would fast and be with the Lord. You know, I would Once a week, every Sunday. I did that for forever. Constantly. That does not include the special extra times. But generally, every day. Every day, you are before the Lord, not for sure. You are with the Lord, with God's people, general devotions alone. 
consistently. Is that consistent thing that the best way to build a solid thing is consistent? Is like eating food, eating a number of times every day consistently. Not one big. So what many people do is they they, they despise God. Then they give thirty days fasting and prayer. Then they despise God for one year. Then they, don't be like that. That's like a husband telling a wife. Someone said. Hey, darling, you know I love you, but I just want to have an affair briefly. I'll just, it'll just be one week. Okay, just one day. Don't worry, I'm coming back to you. Are you real? Don't do that to God. Be consistent. Are we clear? The Lord was consistent. I learned Jesus. Paul said, he said, you have not so been taught Christ. Christ is a you you is taught. The foundational teachings of the Christos. It is taught. It is transmitted like line upon line. It's not, it's not, you don't pick a book. I'm gonna pick this book, I'm gonna read it. When I finish, I'll know. No. And I repeat, there's a price to pay. You see, what many people have as a challenge, they don't believe in paying prices. I'm going, I'm rushing back to Egypt as we swing back to the promised land. You leave Egypt. They got to the border of the promised land. They stood there and said, we cannot do it. How do you know? These men of God that went before us, out of 12 of them, 10 of them said it's not possible. That is too challenging, I say, to face these giants of Christianity. It's too challenging. It's too challenging. Ah, it's too, we can't now. We are like grasshoppers. Ah, is it easy? Please, leave it. Nobody, everybody is corrupt. Everybody. Me, I don't deceive myself. I know I cannot. There's no way I cannot tell a lie sometimes. There's no way. There's nobody that does not fall. There's no, you keep talking about giants. You keep saying these things. That the God who brought you out cannot bring you in. Cannot conquer these big, strong enemies that face true Christianity. That's what it is. If you don't know what giants are, giants are big, strong things that you look at what God said he will do with you and say, I used to think it's possible, but I don't think it is. Reality says it's not. That's a giant. The moment you say that, get ready to be sent back to the roaming life. That's how two years becomes a 40-year trip. That's how you have the 40 years in the wilderness of testing and trial. Since you chose not to pass your exams once, we will rewrite till you die. And literally, they rewrote till they died. Only two of their mates were left, Joshua and Caleb, then the younger generation, which is why I tell this generation, you guys don't understand. You don't. You are like the last generation I keep saying there's a generation that crosses. It's not an option. They, you have to cross. Why? Because previous generations, most have been rejected. So God is going to extricate from the last generation a group that must take the land. It is what it is. Question is if you'll be among or whether you'll be sifted out and die like your spiritual fathers in the wilderness where you roam around and worship gold and call it God. Or you will enter a land where, back to our story, the first thing they'll do, the real work of God, even though you had experienced Passover, you've been forgiven. Hear me and hear me well. You've been forgiven of your sins, justified. How come Joshua is circumcising them. Are you saying we are not chosen? You are. Why are you probing into my life? You can never take your enemies if there are things in your life that the enemy can use against you. This is why many that seem God will use them mightily completely fail and fizzle out and become Slaves to the things they were to enslave. They are mastered by the things they were to be masters over. So many have proceeded with great gusto 
We go forward. Oh, the guy is called. Yes, he has an anointing. No, the spirit grace of God is upon him. I'm telling you. Ah, have you seen that guy? No, no, I heard. Oh, ah, when we were in year two, ah, that guy was already far in Jesus. Then you ask, where are they now? How far with them? Say, mm. you guy has a ministry, but the error he's teaching. The error. Now, many of you don't understand. Instead, you start saying men of God comparing with men of God. You know, I mean, once in a while, I have the misfortune. Someone, you know, being a preacher, someone once in a while, very rare, because, but once in a while, you're going to come across a two minute video of someone saying absolute boulder dash, as there is the word of God, just talking nonsense. And you see a crowd of people saying, yeah! And you pity, you pity that crowd. You pity, your heart breaks. Because they are lost. I keep saying it, they will not stand in the flood of the dragon. When the dragon opens his mouth, ha! Ah, in this last days, they are lost. They are lost. He will sweep them all away. He will swallow them up. We saw it on Wednesday. Say, these people mislead my people. Those they are misled are swallowed up. They will be swallowed up. They are swallowed up because you followed a blind leader. How come? But that guy loved the Lord a lot. Well, you can say he began to love the Lord. But he got to the promised land, the border, and said, I can't overcome this weakness. So he yielded to it. He found out that he had these struggles with immorality. He didn't make it a priority that he must fight it till he dies. He, didn't, he, he concluded that the giants can keep occupying the land that God gave him. Never agree. That this body God gave you can be used to commit sin. We saw it. The three things that stop people from having an inheritance. Didn't we see it together? Immorality, impurity, greed, which is idolatry. Three things. These three things. This is the guarantee that you don't enter the promise. And we saw it. You can be sure that no such person has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Ephesians 5 verse 5. So while we are looking at the shadow of what the inheritance is, is with Joshua, I brought you over to show you the spiritual fulfillment. This is the promise and this is the fulfillment. If you want to enter the inheritance that has been kept for us, you must overcome these things. You cannot be greedy. When I hear servant of God, you don't, we don't often know much about they are immorality or moral things, except things are exposed and exposed and exposed. You do know the principle in the scripture is that by the matter of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. Do you know the Bible says, for those of you that wonder sometimes, do you know the scriptures do say that you should not receive an accusation, 1 Timothy 5, against an elder? Except by the mouth of... Huh? Two or three witnesses. Open First Timothy chapter 5. Jump all the way down to verse 24 or 5. Verse 19. Ah. Do not entertain an accusation against an elder. Read. Except on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Who knows English here? Who knows what it means except on the testimony of two or three witnesses? Hmm? No, no. Who had A in English? Without cheating. Without cheating. Why? You didn't cheat. If you even looked at your neighbor's name on this thing, don't raise your hand. Three people. The rest of you. God bless you for your honesty. <laughs> this is a man of God. Come. Point the finger. She accuses me. Listen, put down your hand first. She told you that I am guilty of something. Let's see morality. She told you. Your job is to not entertain it. Stop it. It's not true. Except 
one, two, or three. After these three have accused, then what do you do? You entertain. That means you listen. Uh -huh. So, let me explain how it happens in today's world of the internet. Sit down. One person accuses a pastor. Have you not heard stories about people accusing men of God falsely? Do you think the devil is sleeping? I heard it said, I think for a Dahuza. They're trying to set him up in America. Here, I've told you these things over the years. They're trying to set him up. He enters a hotel room. This story is confusing. I've forgotten how it happened. There was a lady. The plan was for her. It's either two separate stories because there's one where the lady died. She was inside a wardrobe planning to come out. Fire, they don't know where fire came from inside the wardrobe. He burnt her. She died from fire burns. Don't ask me. So said, I don't know. They rushed her to hospital from there. She died. Though. There's another one. He sent whether his wife. They thought it was him. As the wife opened the door, someone wearing a coat and naked on that took it off and jumped and grabbed the person. There was a cameraman. Unfortunately, it was not him. I'm showing you the extent to which wickedness can be planned against a servant of God. It's why you don't jump. You hear a servant of God accused, you just join. Don't. You don't know how serious the kingdom of darkness is. You're the one that does not know Satan is serious. It's you that does not know. Servants of God, not one. I've not heard it from one source. They're in the car or in a plane. And they see someone sitting when they bring food on a long flight. The person refuses to eat. He notice that the person is speaking under the bread. So he thinks so he must be a Christian that is fasting. And finally turns and says, okay, so you, you're not eating? He said, oh, no, I'm on a fast. And what are you fasting about? The man says, oh, we are fasting for the destruction of the marriage of ministers of the gospel. The person is a satanist, open one, he's not hiding. Now no, no, they hide, do evil. There are people they have committed. He said they are on a 40 day fast. That's a separate story. 40 day fast to that the homes of Christian preachers should be destroyed. So there's a real, the way I am standing here preaching the truth, trying to save people from darkness. There are people in darkness openly trying to pull people from light into darkness. It's the same way we say, Lord, heal marriages. There are people that are saying, destroy, destroy. Everything you think Christianity does, someone is doing the exact opposite. Not in the spirit realm, on earth too. They have full agreement. There are people sitting there and saying, how do we change the law? How do we corrupt the children? Um, um, are you not seeing what's happening in Western countries? How, how do you corrupt the children? Hey, let you think when they sit in class and decide to put nonsense in the curriculum for primary school children that it started in class. No, it started in a coven meeting of real human beings on a Friday evening like this, Saturday, in a room, real people who sit down like this and say, yes, ideas, what are we doing? And someone gets a demonic prophecy. <laughs> you will fight them and gives a demonic prophecy. They stand up like you stand up in a church that knows the Holy Ghost. They draw up. The difference between the church is that when you disobey God, things go like this. In the kingdom of darkness, when you disobey Satan, they kill you. They break your leg. They kill your family member. The, the, it's not, it's not uh, if you like. No, the one is by force. If you don't do it, you suffer. So people that were witches will tell you. John Ramirez uh, and Amendes, different ones. They will tell you as they are having meetings. Sometimes they use church buildings for the meetings. Instead, they will come. You see the big cars. They will walk in. Uh, different people, successful, wearing four coats. She was a, a star tennis player for her nation, Mexico. And they will walk into that meeting. And sometimes, I don't know if physically... But she used to see all sorts of visions. Satan 
high level princess, whether I was really set or not, some high level demon will appear in that meeting. And she says, when they come, they know. As they are telling someone, you failed. Everybody there knows that you're either going to have an accident or your wife will die. Or, that is, is, everyone knows. There's nothing like, uh, how could you? So that's why they are so committed. They are not playing. You, they, you want people that play, go to church. And that's where everybody's joking. In the kingdom of darkness, there's no playing. There's no playing. Nobody, nobody's your friend. You didn't hear, hear James Kawalia. After I helped them succeed, they're planning to eat him. Chop him up physically and chew him. That, that's, that's the kingdom of darkness. A dark and cruel place. So these people are committed to what they do. When they say they are fasting to destroy my, they know. They are chanting. They, they, they are not doing it because they like to do it only. No, they do it out of fear and terror. So they didn't just sit in that class. You're the one that thinks it's the school board that sat down. Which school board? Which school board? The principal is a witch, a wizard. He puts on red clothes and does demonic witchcraft. So he comes dressed normal and says, well, ma'am. There's a young lady they, they, they sentenced recently. And she, I don't know how many babies she killed in Britain. I don't know why people never seem to know what's up really. You think that woman was putting poison to those babies things and they die one by one because uh, she's just bad. <laughs> Even those hospitals, who read this thing? Even these hospital superintendents, all that. You, okay, in the age to come, we will know. When God shows you that they are part of a covenant, when they say they used to report her, and instead they were punishing other people, and she was protected, protected, till the thing was exposed, and they couldn't hide it anymore. So if they tell you that likely she and those other uh, superintendents in that hospital are all part of a coven, and that they sat down and said, we need, we need baby sacrifices. You, make sure you give us 50 babies. And she was at number, whether 15. Then they caught her. Now, she's not going to start exposing everybody now. She can't. So she'll take the fall. She'll go to prison. Everybody will be talking, hmm, what a wicked woman. That's you're being a child. That's not how things work on this earth. It's not a wicked woman. She's a woman on duty. She's working. She's at work. It's so, we, we can be so childish. We have to stop being childish. There's a real war. It's not in the spirit realm only. It's on the, in the physical earth. It manifests here. Satan has agents. They are real agents. They do real work. They must work. If they don't work, they suffer. So they are scared and must work. They don't want to lose their children, their families. They don't want to have accidents. They will talk about being so sick. They would speak about being so unwell. Falling sick, different things would happen to them. And they would know, and no doctor. If you read, uh, he came to set the captives free by Rebecca Brown. Elaine. You're the one busy saying, uh, uh, they'll go to the hospital. They can't diagnose what is wrong with you. Because it's not natural. It's, it's spiritual. And she, in the hospital, she knows exactly why she's sick. She knows you're wasting your time. And she said she'll be lying down there on the hospital bed. She doesn't like the doctor they are giving. The first doctor they brought is a fellow wizard. And since they're always fighting. And she analyzes. And she's there in intensive care unit, beating the man, throwing him, hitting the ceiling, flinging the doctor everywhere. So the doctor runs because she's very highly placed. Her demons are not local. Deals with the man. Then they changed the doctor. They gave her an unbeliever who does not believe in God, atheist. She, she's lying down here going to his house, pulling out the fridge, this thing, so everything will spoil, writing on the wall, throwing plates at him. It's not someone that will tell you, I don't want this patient, because she, he knows exactly who he's doing, but he can't even tell. How can you tell? that? You know they will lock you up in a psychiatric asylum. Why did, was she doing this? God was trying to save her. She wanted Elaine, the Christian doctor. She didn't know, but she just liked her. She was sweet. So when that one comes to treat her, demons will talk out of her mouth. 
when she comes near, the demons will say nasty things. She's trying to say, shut up. And the demon will say, because the demon knows this is a child of God. <laughs> so he'll be using her mouth. She was full of demons. She was, she was thick with demons. Eventually, God saved her. It wasn't a simple matter because she was deep. She was very deep in darkness. Very deep. One of the so-called seven brides of Satan in the USA. From when she was a baby, they took her blood as a baby. Before she knew left from right, her mother had given the blood for surgery. Her cleft lip. What did she know? They said, oh, there's a group that can sponsor these plastic surgery. This is 60s or 50s or 40s. That it was a new thing. They can sponsor plastic surgery. If you give us a small vial of her blood, that's all. That's a blood covenant. They took it and that's, that's why you say the devil is so wicked. Devil is, devil is, <laughs> the devil is the devil. At least respect it. Is it easy to be the devil? So they come, they just, we just need small, just small. Just small. Yeah, it's just, there's nothing there. It's just, was blood involved. <laughs> you are the one that does not know how far was blood involved. Something has a finger in your life. And that hand can stay there till you die if it's not pulled out. And it's only the power of Jesus that can pull it out. Anyways, don't hear that for nothing. All of that. You know, sometimes people act like they are clueless. You know, something I was, I was praying today. I believe it was ministered to me and I'm telling you, I'm glad I've remembered. Some of you, even in this congregation and the new people that keep coming, you come and sometimes we are, you're going through the processes, going through the Believer's Bible School, you're going through, you're being prayed for and things are being picked up on and you know things that have happened in your life. Things that were fetish. You know they took you somewhere. You know this happened. That there was this time when you were very sick, when you were, you've heard or some you remember. And you just keep keeping quiet. Making everything complicated. The devil tries to make covenants with everything. Don't be keeping quiet about things you know. Stop saying if God wants to talk about it, he will tell the people praying for me. You are wasting time and you are very ignorant. You ought to be declaring things long before. Say, sorry, I want to tell you something. My mother took me to at least four places. When one, two, three, four. When I was this, this happened, this happened, this happened. This happened. You ought to tell. I've told you. Don't say I didn't tell you. I've delivered the message. Why do you keep quiet? You can be suffering from the effects of that fetish practice, that demonic involvement. Whether you knew or not, whether it's too small, it doesn't matter. It's not till the Holy Spirit reveals. Now, we've, how do we know? The Holy Spirit has revealed many of these things to us. And we've told people, ask me, people have gone back to ask their family and they say, yes, it's true. That's the long way. That, it mustn't be when they are praying for you. One must well, be here. I was praying for someone some weeks ago. You know, and then we start saying things. Things that you cannot possibly know. It's the long way. Why, why do you use the long way? If you are aware, say it. Before they even, if they, if they say, oh, someone had a dream. Or you are having things troubling you. Open your mouth. Have sense in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and say, um, I would like to say this. Carefully pray and even write it down. These are the interactions I've had with the kingdom of darkness. I didn't know it was a kingdom. They said it was a church. They said, but when I went there, the man did this. The woman did this. And they took a chicken. And they took that chicken and they did on my body till the chicken died. They said they were, Madam, Oga, you have been involved in juju. You are not clean. Neither are you free. Oh, they took me to a river. They put me inside that river and then it wasn't baptism. What was that? Don't ask unnecessary questions and it is your life or is you that will be suffering. All of those things are agreements with the kingdom of darkness. 
end all of them. You must, and sometimes it's quite easy. You open your mouth. I renounce everything associated. Don't do it now. It will be a time for, I'm not even today. I'm just telling you. Everything. You want to be free, then be serious. Can't be hiding things. How unserious can you be? Now, I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want any deliverance session this night. But hear me. I've made my point. So make sure you leave here. Go and note. Ask the Lord. Write down things. And then, if you're a church member, you talk to your disciple. You say, this and this and this. When pastor said this, I remember this. I've never talked about it. You have to have a session where you're praying and you renounce things and you're prayed for. Don't joke with it. Don't say, I'm born again. You don't know what you're saying. It doesn't matter that you're born again. It doesn't matter. You've heard people say things in this house. A lot of you have not heard. You're too brand new. And many things are not said from this place. People have been hooked and connected to things. You saw me just say two weeks ago. So stand here and ask someone. Uh, you went somewhere and you drank something. And they say, yes. How many years ago? And they are vomiting it. How many years after? How did I know she had been given demonic things to drink? Because you don't start vomiting what is not. How can, are you saying it was in her stomach for four years, five years, six years? It's not a physical stomach. That's not how the spirit realm works. The spirit realm works completely differently. Completely differently. The devil has embeddings in people's lives everywhere. It's what he loves to do. He hides things that he can use to claim your life. That's it. He uses it to claim you. He took that young lady's blood and he, he used it to control her. She said she wouldn't know what would come on her. Demonic power like this. And she's small. Example, she was in a school. Do you know American football? It's not football. American soccer, they throw a ball. Then everybody rushes you, tries to break your bones. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. American, just wild play, but, uh, rough play, just rough play, but they call it a game. They wear cages around their face. You, you know what I'm talking about. It's the roughest thing on earth. Now that you're clear on what American football is. The head of the team, six foot something, she is small, in high school, secondary school, and she has a cleft lip, you know, she's not ugly, she's always changing school, her mother is always, things are not cool, but she has demons. She didn't even know. She didn't know. She didn't enter any official initiation yet. But remember, they are taking her blood when she was small. And what happens? She's walking past, and the head of the football team, big guy, walking past with his friend, says, there goes that ugly cleft lip. That's the last thing she remembers hearing. The next time she comes to her senses, she's trying to drown him in a toilet. She's in a toilet. He's not in the toilet. He spoke to her. She has beaten him, broken his jaw, his arm. She's drowning him in a toilet bowl. Five teachers are pulling her off. Now, that's not human strength. That's incredible, Hawk. That's demons. That's not human. It's not possible. And that was normal. You just blank out. The demon takes over. So when you see people doing impossible things, having impossible abilities. You heard James Kawalia talk about being a little boy who has not gone to school. When he goes on exam, he passes better than everybody. And it's not him. She said it. Elaine said she could speak multiple languages. When she was initiated, two major demons entered her. One warrior, one is for mental stuff. She could, she comes here, she just starts speaking a foreign language she has not learned. That one is for meeting high-level people. Now, again, there are people who have read those things and say it's a lie. They will know. When they see Jesus, they will know. They don't know anything. When people don't know anything, they shouldn't be talking. This world is very dark. The Bible tells you. That the world is a dark place. There's thick wickedness happening in pockets all around. And they are everywhere. When you read statistics, you hear about America. In America, every city, every place, the things they find that are clear signs of satanic worship. Human beings drained of all their blood, hanging upside down with satanic marks all over. Everywhere. And the people in those things are doctors, lawyers, everything you can imagine. Professionals, people that wear ties and you see on TV. Well, today, the city of New York, and they live there and they are pure witches. Not this local Nigeria witch that is, you know, our own witchcraft is small. You know, you have to leave your body and in dream. Now in the, they attend meetings. These people attend meetings with their body. You don't understand. 
our local witchcraft is, I'm not saying it's not dangerous. I'm just saying there's levels. So. <laughs> you didn't hear James Cavalier? Local witchcraft. His, all his power was like nothing. There's levels of darkness. You know, white people are organized. You guys, nya, nya, nya. Deep darkness. So we have to stop just being babies forever. You can't be a baby forever. And I'm saying it because some again, some of you are saying, well, should I be born again? Should I not? You're on your own. I'm talking to those that want to be born again. You are born again. You are born again. You have left Egypt. Better get Egypt out of you. If you don't get Egypt out of you, you'll be dragged right back. You will never have the inheritance. You can't have an inheritance when you're in the wilderness, when you die in the wilderness. Your inheritance is not in the wilderness. What do you see in the wilderness? You see miracles. Let me explain. In the wilderness, manna falls from the sky. Yes? Yes. In the wilderness... Water comes out from the rock. In the wilderness, birds fall out from the sky. Before the wilderness self, you are seeing signs and wonders in Egypt. In the wilderness, God is there. You are seeing a cloud, a pillar of cloud. Day and night, fire. The supernatural is there. You are seeing the cloud of glory lead you to and fro. All of this, you are still in the wilderness. But I repeat, the wilderness is not meant to last forever. There's a limit on it. If by any chance your disobedience makes your wilderness to last longer, it should still finish. Are you hearing? My advice to you is don't extend your wilderness period. Are you hearing? Don't. One. Two. If you have extended your wilderness period, and I can show you many people individually have, but there's a collective extension that the church of God has through backsliding and disobedience. For those who have not heard it before, from Jesus to the time we are coming to an end of this transition period, 2,000 years is a total of 40, 50 year period. A jubilee is 50 years. 50 times 40 is 2,000. Are you hearing me? Are you sure you understand? Am I wrong? 50 times 40 is what? 2,000. The church has been in its wilderness. We are approaching the end of the wilderness period. 2025 marks the last jubilee. The Essene calendar, which is a solar calendar, not the lunar calendar of the Pharisees, which most people call the Jewish calendar. The Essene calendar... Fifty more years. 2075 is a total of 2,000. Shikena. If the church is coming to the end of its wilderness period, even though the church, after Jesus, not long after, so many people fell away. Yes? Have you heard of the Dark Ages? The false church arose, claimed to be the vicar of God on earth, the Roman church. Lots of disaster. It's not the only church. There's the Eastern Church. Catholic Church, which most of you do not know about. <laughs> There's the Western. What you need is about the Western Church. Your Protestant Reformation came out of the Western Church. There's the Eastern, Russia, other parts of the world, all of that. Even the parts called Israel, all of that is in the Eastern. I've hinted you here that there are beliefs that are not in line with you. If you've heard of the Eastern Orthodox Church, you've seen those men with long black caps, black like that. They developed at the same time with what you so it's not the Roman Catholic Church did not rule everybody. The Catholic Church included all. Then there's the Eastern Catholic Church. Then there's even there's all sorts of things. It's not just from the past, in the present. Most times Christians talk, they talk about only the Western Christianity. There are millions of people in this one. Millions. <laughs> millions. I've told you, they don't believe everything you believe. Example, they don't believe hell is forever. All of these guys. That is, they've never believed it. It's you guys on this side that believe it. 
And they have some other very dramatic. And they've been developing. We are talking about from the time of the apostles. Though. We don't mean day before yesterday. Like that. They exist. Dark times came on the church. Very dark. Different ways of thinking. Many areas of agreement, some severe areas of disagreement. As the end is coming, is the end of a season of roaming. Many as then, so it will be now. Two over 12 is one over six. Six is the number of man. Only a remnant of mankind will cross over. The rest will die here in their ways of thinking, their beliefs. They, are, they can't come through. I, I say this sometimes to, in a sense, challenge you to aspire. In another sense, to tell you, well, if you don't come through, it's not the first time. You do know there's nothing new under the sun. This is where people start saying, no, it's not a portion. <laughs> That's not how it works. What is has been. Ecclesiastes 1. Verse 9. What has been will be again. And what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Understand it. That's why you read your Bible. That's why anyone that comes and tells you the Old Testament is not for us. <laughs> Run. That person is about to render you blind. Because what will be has been done before. And instead of the person allowing you to go to the so-called Old Testament, which the Bible never calls the Old Testament, it calls it the Scriptures. When Jesus rose from the dead, this is where he's quoting from. This is where he's teaching and proving the things concerning himself. A resurrected Jesus uses what you call the Old Testament. And you have a generation blind and confused who say things like, as Christian, there is no more for us. And you nod. Muy guishly. Someone is trying to kill you and you're nodding. Yes, yeah, stab me here. Put the knife here. Don't even play with people who say these things. It's not even funny. They want to blind you completely. And they don't know that they are being used by the enemy. All scripture. Why do you think that scriptures exist in your so-called New Testament? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All. It tells you, ancient Second Peter 1, that men were moved by the Holy Spirit. Holy men, men that have been set apart for the purpose. And someone shows up and disdains those. He's, he's not disdaining men. When he criticizes Joel and attacks Zephaniah and makes rubbish of, 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 of Ezra, he's not him. He's attacking the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 1.21, for no such prophecy, that's of scripture, if you read earlier on, was ever brought forth by the will of man. But men spoke, read, from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Someone comes and rubbishes what God said through the Holy Spirit. You, 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 you smile and nod. You smile and nod. You think that's a personal opinion. That's not a personal opinion. You are, you are about to blaspheme the Holy Spirit and you give account to him when the day comes. He will ask you, did you read this? How did you interpret it? Say, well, I didn't really pay attention. Why didn't you pay attention? Didn't you know they were my words? You're not afraid of me? He said, this is the one I look to, the one who trembles at my word. When the Holy Spirit speaks, you do not disdain. You do not mock. You do not treat lightly. He's the maker. He's the spirit that brooded over the earth when he had no form and was empty. And formed the things as God spoke the word. So how dare you despise or look down on the things that he says. Are you understanding these things? The end of the age is upon us. Inheritances 
Jordan is being crossed. We had a retreat in the year 2018, I believe, called what? Crossing the Jordan, in summary, I can't remember the exact way we say. We didn't print anything. We didn't have video or anything. But the Crossing Jordan, there was a retreat we had that involved the Holy Spirit was stressing that we are crossing Jordan. We had visions of the other side repeatedly. God showed us a people. He showed the land. And we need to look at those visions again. We need to uh, find them and look at them. And spoke to us about the other side, about the enemies we will fight, about the process of crossing, about the challenges we will face. So I don't even know if we had audio. If we have, you should try and listen to it. If we don't have audio, we should be able to summarize the notes and look at the things that the Holy Spirit told to us then. And if it's 2020, that would be that would be 2018. That would be if you add, if it was about March, that would be about almost seven years. There's a season the church is coming to. An inheritance lies before us. I showed you the other day. There are those that will cross that are men armed for battle. Warriors only. The men of Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. So you should be trying to become men, no more children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You should try to become men so you can cross undistracted. Now, there will be those when the crossing happens. It's called the first resurrection. The church calls it mostly the rapture. There will be those that are still, you know, many people think when the rapture happens, everything on earth falls apart. No, the earth will go on. The earth will go on. Things are not going to be how you think. A lot of what you've been told is just wrong. The only way I can prove it is you see. That's, that's sometimes. The, the, it's, how am I going to prove it? Your favorite pastor said something else. What can I say? Let's just wait now. Just wait. Don't, just be around. If you die before that, you still know how far. Don't worry. We will see. Ah, things are good. So many people will be shocked. I've told in the ages to come, most people, I think this is all they'll be walking around doing. I think people just be walking around. Because everything you thought will be adjusted. But times are coming. I'm not saying the earth will go on as normal. Oh. No, 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 no. Very soon, things are going to get very hairy. Very hairy. That one is not, that one is already happening. It's going to get even more crazy. It's going to get so crazy, you will not believe. I've told you that for years. Some has already happened. Now, you're going to go further as we go further. And the first resurrection will happen. When will it happen? I don't know. A short while, a long while, a decade, decades, not up to a decade. The first resurrection will happen. The rapture will happen. Things will shake. Things will change. There will be adjustments in this world. Big adjustments. But mankind will continue. But the battle will increase because the devil knows his time is short. All these things we are talking about in secret, the secret evil going on is going to come out more and more. It's already coming out in schools. They have after school certain clubs. If not that Satan is in that song, I would have played it. I like this tune, it's nice. Who has heard it? The after school Satan club song. Very sweet. Open. They are suing. They just sued a school not long ago in America. They won $200,000 settlement. $200,000 is millions and millions of naira. You can't even believe how much money that is. for stopping them from having their certain club. This is primary school children and secondary. Openly, you know, behind. 
So children are wearing backpacks, T-shirts with Satan on it. <coughs> they have textbooks. They have... <laughs> <laughs> but I've told you all of this is child's play. It's going to get so far worse. <laughs> and people you know will say, well, well, let's not, well, let's not be superstitious. People you know, classmates you had, will open their mouth and say things like, leave, this thing is not, it doesn't matter. You look at them, their head will be on their shoulder. They will say to you, your face. What will you do? All we can do is determine to be ready and learn how to fight according to the will of God. Because there's territory to be conquered, a lot of territory. There will be fierce fighting. How much territory have we conquered? That seven mountain prophecy that is so popular, I've told you it's not really for now, it's for the future. But again, sometimes what the devil does, all the devil needs to do to confuse Christians is to take what God has said and change the time. How many of you know, if you're called for an interview in ExxonMobil to get a job, that that's something you can be happy about, that they will pay you well? Yes, no? Yes. How many of you know that if someone, they send text messages to the people they want to interview, that they should be, today is Friday, that they should be in a cat on Monday at the terminal by 8 a.m., for the job interview, and someone took your text message and changed it to 12 p.m. that Monday. How many of you know you're finished? How many of you know they, that's all they... They just changed two numbers. That's all. How many of you know you're finished? You know you don't have the job, right? It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. It doesn't matter how much you rejoiced. Because if you knew you believed it was 8 a.m., okay, you would have left Uyo on Sunday evening. Yes? Stayed somewhere in Eket and gone for your interview. You'll be in Eket. You won't even come from Uyo. Even though it's one hour, you wouldn't stay. Your mother wouldn't allow you to stay. They will bundle you up. Go, go, go. We have somebody I need in secondary school. Go and stay with them. <laughs> Don't play that kind of play. What if the car spoils? I beg, leave this land. They will move you to Ibono. They will look for money and rent hotel room. Yes? yes sir. But when someone tells you it's 12 o'clock, how many of you know there's enough time to come down for any broken down vehicle and bought three, four, five, ten more? Yes? yes That's how the person killed you. Now, all the devil has to do is move the timing on things God has said and sends Christians in complete confusion. You're not hearing me. So he goes to Jehovah's Witnesses and tells them Jesus is coming 1844, the Seventh-day Adventists, all that. Confusion. He goes to another group, tells them 1977. Confusion. Just, shift, just shifting the times wrongly is enough to make people fall away in quote from the faith. Because the only reason they came was they believed it's this time. So they were righteous for that time. They are like, after the date change, they were like, I cannot be righteous forever. The righteousness is too much. They didn't really want to be righteous. They're trying to deceive God. That's why God is like, to the shrew, I'll show myself. You think you can use my head. So you say, if he, why did God allow them to be deceived? Because they think they can deceive God. You didn't follow God because God is God. You want to follow him because you're trying to be ready on the day of his coming. Look at your head. So God will allow enough deceptive dates till you give up and go back to where your heart is which is the world. Are you understanding? So don't ever be angry about dates and times. Why should he tell you the exact time? We know he will tell when it's close, but why should he tell you? Are you following because of a date and time? You should follow him because he's Lord. Are you understanding? So this thing about dates and times is not anyone that tries to be righteous <laughs> for, a, for a small amount of time will know something. You will know that the God who gave you Psalm 18 is not your mate. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. Verse 25. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. Read with me. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You think you're crooked? He will show you something. The time is coming. 
to enter into our inheritance in a whole new way. Battles are coming. Remember, before they cross the Jordan, there are battles. The church has been roaming about the wilderness. Listen, the battles before the wilderness are few and far between. They are skirmishes. At the end, when you near Jordan, that's where you take on giants, Og and Sihon. That's when you fight giants. So we are hitting giant. We are in the giant stage. We are approaching it. It's going to increase. And we must fight them. Remember, we saw last week, you can this week, you cannot take the land without fighting. And it's violent warfare. And it's not shouting. This is why it's important we know how to fight. If you've been trained that fighting is shouting and praying in fear and running from witches and using oil and drinking oil and putting oil in your eyes and rubbing oil. If you've been taught now, someone, I'm saying this thing, so you're here. Rubbing oils, collecting special oils, doing all that is nonsense. Let me show you it's nonsense. Something will press you after you rubbed it. You'll be pressed. This thing I'm saying, it has already happened to some of you, but I'm saying for the one who is doubting me, you'll be pressed. In, I don't need to say in Jesus' name. You'll be pressed. Hey, you're rubbing oil because God is an unction, a, a, an ointment. You're rubbing oil. The Holy Ghost is not oil. Okay, they'll press you twice at least. When you repent, you stop. You're rubbing oil. That's your warfare. God is oil. If you don't want them to press you, don't rub nonsense. Go and throw away that nonsense. Now, you know yourself. I don't know you. I, you know I don't know you. Go and throw away nonsense. Don't be silly. They said you should take this thing. You just, if, what will happen? You're a juju child. Those things bring demons. Those things bring demons. You're attracting them. Why would you do that? Because you're ignorant. You won't learn real warfare. You won't sit down and learn to use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You want to be robbing things. Doing small juju-like things. Small, this one is mantle. <laughs> I'll be doing small. This pen, they prayed for it. They said, this is the pen I should use in my exam. If you do, oh, careful, you fell the exam. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm declaring that all juju you have used that even though you thought it was working before, this time God will show you that foolishness is not good, especially if you're truly born again, if you're unsaved. So you'll be born again. It will also fail you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Father, I'm speaking for you. All your idols will fail you this season. Amen. They must fail you. Amen. Stop doing nonsense. Jesus is not, uh, he's not things. It's a pen. Enter, have a exam. Use this one. You take it, dust. You live like a sinner. Then, then you have a exam pen. You better buy a normal pen. Though. Don't say you didn't have another pen. Go and buy it now. Buy a pen by the side of the road. Use that to write your exam so you can have hope. <laughs> I've warned you. I don't even know they do these things. They do these things. Yes. I don't even know it in my head. Someone needs to tell me, I beg, when we leave here, someone should educate me. I'm just hearing these things. Silliness. You call on the name of Jesus. So the whole spirit realm is confused. Demons are happy. Angels are like, should we, do we defend, do we? He looks like them. What do we do here? What do we do in this situation? Even in the old, under the old covenant, they're not doing juju. They're not carrying things, rubbing things. Even in the old covenant. Even when the priest goes through purification rites, takes that bed, the first thing you do when you leave there is say, go and bath. How was ready before? Do you know when you bath, you're washing off whatever else that was done? You're on you. You, you do look for something to do. Because you think you're our God, the Lord Jesus Christ is... Is a is a it, well, instead of your being cleansed from all these things from your past that you didn't know better. Now I am being merciful to those that you didn't know better. But after now, now you know. You have heard me. You now know. Don't say I didn't say oh. and you have F throughout parallel. Don't say they didn't tell you. Don't say I'm going to prove it. No, because you sat under my voice. 
damage has gone forth. That's how it works. It's not, you'd have passed normally, but now, trouble. Don't be angry. You enter my space. Did I invite you? I'm setting you free. Don't get used to being a juju practitioner. Because in this end of the age, juju is going to kill people everywhere. Oh, juju is going to finish everybody everywhere. Oh, it's going to finish left, right, and center. Remember, the devil just needs something, a token on your life. That's all he needs. Just have small of his property in your pocket. Just small. That's all he needs. He will, he will squeeze out all he can from that contact. That's how the devil fights. In Israel, they would have one small shrine like this. All Israel will be destroyed. One small thing. Look at Gideon, the great warrior. Our Gideon. Our own Gideon of the fleece and the barley loaf. The one we know. He made the gift men brought gold and silver after the battle with the Midianites and gave him. Instead of his using it to, to build a nicer house and, 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 and enjoy and buy extra donkeys. He used it and made in the name of whether humility or humility. Instead of giving to the poor, he used it and made that spirit that God first told him pull down. The first thing God said, he made an effort and kept it. And all Israel came there, had a shrine. Oh, ah, God of Gideon. He did not even finish dying properly. He had 70 sons. They killed 69. Can you imagine? They killed them. Now, listen for you that is wondering, is that why it happened? Who else had 70 sons that they killed all? His name was Ahab. And he was guilty of what? Idolatry. So don't ask too many questions. You know, Gideon's other name is Jerubah. Don't ask questions. Now you may say, but the Bible doesn't talk about the Bible doesn't talk about everything. How could God allow them to kill all of Gideon's sons, the great hero? Because Gideon created idolatry. Idolatry is your worst enemy. And I told you last week, greed, at the very end of the meeting, we are hurrying to close. Greed is idolatry. And this is how I know the majority of the body of Christ will not stand in the last day battles. Why? Because they are idolaters. Why? Their relationship with money. They are idolaters. They live for gold. They run after gold. Their life is decided by gold. They decide where they live, where they work, what job they choose, what career, what is their calling. All of it is by how much they will get. They pick a course to read because of money. Everything is money, 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 money. Decisions are made by money, 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 money. They don't stand up and say, Lord, what is your calling for my life? Where should I live? Where should I school? Who should I marry? People want to marry. They look, does he, he have a good job? Does she have a good job? Those days, women used to look for men that have a good job. Now men are looking for women with good jobs. You don't know? Oh, you will know. I'm checking them. Oh, she's a medical student. Okay. Steady, steady money. At least cover house. If I make my own money, it's for building. Okay, um, this one. Okay. People are looking at people and making decisions as to relationships based on potential income earning ability. All this is evil. All this is wrong. It's wrong. People go to churches. I have a relative that was once a big man. In the church he was. People would join that congregation so they can be able to say brother to the person in political office so they can do contracts. Don't tell me otherwise. It is what it is. People are in church groups depending on who they can meet. And then you're telling me when they are doing praise and worship in that church and the person lifts their hands, hallelujah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, look, I hope he thinks I'm spiritual. I hope he thinks I'm spiritual. Yeah. Oh, they fall on the ground watch him. You say, ah, what a, what? Oh, he's such a sincere brother. Till they give him job and he runs with the money. And then they start saying, I don't know why he changed like that. I wouldn't wonder. They start telling Proverbs about how people are scary. He was never real. He was acting drama. He needed you to trust. After all, he knew oh, he was a very sincere brother. People in churches everywhere have been shocked at what, in quote, brethren have done to them. Have you ever considered that they were never brethren? That they are what Paul called 
false brethren. I'm explaining how idolatry as a thing. People can agree. Immorality is bad. At least most people will say that openly. Immorality is bad. Impurity, I'm trying to overcome it. But idolatry? No. You must have dreams. You must have passion. Are you not planning to travel? There's this thing they are doing. You can travel abroad. Greener pastures. Did you check if the greenery is from the dead bodies under the ground? You've never considered that corpses make grass grow? I couldn't have come up with that illustration. Talk to him. Have you considered that bodies under the ground make grass grow? Manure. What makes it a greener pasture? How many people have sunk in those waters and been lost to life? Oh, when she was in Nigeria, she knew God. She traveled abroad. She's a party girl now. That's what you want to copy. This is sad, but let me say it. You should know it. Rick Joyner has how many children? At least four. Some of them, when I remember that, that one's name, I would tell these stories years ago. How when she, before she was born, God, Bob Jones told her, so this is the child you born, the child you're about to born, give birth to. This is the weight it will be when it's born. Eight pounds. She'll be born on the eighth day of the eighth month by eight o'clock. You can't come up with these things. And all of it comes to pass. When she was four, I had Regina's cassette tapes in early 2000. Cassette tapes. When she was four, very prophetic. And he says, I'm going to take you people out. And, yeah, daddy, where are we going? And he says, it's a secret. And she'll go, four years old, and she goes quiet. And he says, he knows. That's how she does. Then she starts describing the place. She tunes in. She goes prophetic. We are going to a place. There's swings. And there's a sandbox. A very big sand. Now, Regina doesn't even know that. They get the, all those things out there. She's four. Where are all Regina's children? You've never ever heard of them anywhere. They are all Democrats. Liberals. I heard him from a message he preached on 31st December. I heard it yesterday night. He said the biggest mistake of his life as a parent was to send his children to the public universities. And he's telling parents, don't do it. Don't do it. Our rejoiner, the internationally recognized prophet, voice of God, who has affected how many lives? If you haven't read the final quest, you should read it. You repent again. You become a real Christian. Just read it. His children, his own children. All. Your father will say something online. They will come online and apologize. Sorry. Forgive our father for his error. Very strange. You know, I heard his daughter saying something once. They, they are big people now. They are not small. There's nothing small about them. They may, who knows? Some might be uh, probably not older than me. Who knows? They are not young at all. But the daughter was saying something. And she's the one that will pose the father like this. Said that, oh, the safest place I have is my father. That's when life, the earth shakes. It's my father I run to. As a grown-up woman. So she enjoys the angels around him. She enjoys the, the grace, the love. But she, her mind. I've told you mental poisoning is worse than physical. You're listening to nonsense, hearing nonsense constantly. Whatever, I've told you that's a polluting of your spirit. It would mess with your spirit. To mess with your spirit. It will contort and distort the setting of your spirit. The Lord does not want you to let anything you like inside of you. He doesn't. And I'm saying, he didn't say it in secret, he said it openly. So if he says it, he said the biggest mistake he made, that he was trying to teach them, uh, was trying to be free, like free thinking. Like you guys, think freely. I'm not telling you what to think. Oh. He said he went too far, left field. How do he gave the description that he started landing the plane too close to the edge of the fence. 
So the plane went too far. You know, it was a pilot. It, it went beyond the 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 the, 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 the airstrip. In his attempt to tell his, no, no, it's okay. You can believe, you know, I'm not forcing you what to believe. I'm not telling you what to believe. He went so extreme. All, all of them. And that's what happens when people try to, in the name of being too free. If you know me and you've heard me preach, again, I haven't heard any preacher that cha- calls people to question and challenge and feel free to express contrary opinions. I do it all the time. I'm open to the possibility. I just spoke on this the other day. But I don't have lightly held convictions. They are usually very deeply rooted in the scriptures. But I'm open to not seeing something a certain way. I'm open. And some people are not. You know, most preachers want you to not think in their presence. Me, I command you to think. I order everybody around me. Challenge it. You have something to say? So I call for questions in meetings. Almost every meeting, it's possible. In private, I'm the same. It's not different. It's not like when I'm here, I'm one. In private, it's the same thing. I'm open to hearing your thoughts contrary from scripture. You say, but I insist it must be according to scripture. Don't just open your mouth. How dare you? Don't just open your mouth. You should be afraid. God has opened his mouth. You're opening. Open with care. Don't be casual as to what God thinks or says. Don't misrepresent him. He that speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. So what happens after the children of Israel get there? Are we back to Joshua? Where were we? Joshua says, we are Joshua 5, and they are being circumcised. And I showed you how when you circumcise a man, they are completely weak. Why would God make them so weak? Listen to me. So that you can know by strength shall no man prevail. They are about to engage with their enemies, not on the other side of the Jordan, but on this side. Now they are in the promised land. There is the first city on this side of the Jordan called Jericho with thick walls. Those men could have come down there and attacked them. But instead they are standing and hearing those men scream in pain. Oh, oh, when the sword of the spirit begins to invade the secret places of your life, your heart, your mind, when the sword of the spirit begins to go in to create the change you need, to create the adjustments required for you to be, remember, equipped. All scripture is given that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. They were not thoroughly equipped. They had not invaded the private spaces of their life. They still had secrets. They had things that the devil will use. He would be able to say of them, they are uncircumcised like us. On what basis are you giving them our territory? As we are, they are. Remember, circumcision was a sign of the covenant, yes? Given to Abraham and his descendants. It's the sign of the covenant given to Abraham and his descendants. He said, all that are born, males born in your house. And this is Abraham, not Moses. So this is not for the Israelites in the covenant with Israel, it's the covenant with Abraham. And the sign is that you must be circumcised. So, and the land, the promise was to Abraham. Remember, when he said he's going to bring them out and give them a a land, it was not made to Moses first. It was made to Abraham. Moses is just someone who helped enter another agreement that will help bring it about for when they get into the land. But the promise that he would give a land was given to Abraham. Are we cool? Now, it is time to implement that promise. And what happens? They enter the land. You can't enter while not abiding by the basic token of that promise. The promise was 
all born in your house will be circumcised. Question, if you don't agree to be circumcised, you think that there are aspects of your life God should not touch. I am here to inform you, you will not get your inheritance. This is not Pastor Ita's opinion. It is the word of the Lord. You can't. Uncircumcised people, and it's not physical circumcision, it's called the circumcision of the heart. Uncircumcised hearts cannot participate in the promised land. If you want to understand this a bit better, you need to go to the book of Romans chapter 2. And you show the circumcision of your heart in the obedience you practice as a lifestyle. It is the obedience. We read part of this when someone asked a question in the last meeting. Verse 28 and 29. A man is not a Jew because he is one outwardly, nor is circumcision only outward and physical. What is circumcision? Circumcision, no, a man is a Jew because he is one inwardly. And circumcision, read, is a matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a man's praise does not come from men, but from God. So the circumcision of the heart results in God praising you. In other words, these are people who live for God's praise, not for the praise of men. Are you listening to me? A circumcised heart, someone whose heart is circumcised, lives to please God. They don't go around thinking, what, what, what does he think? What do they think? I hope, I, I, hope, I hope what I shared today as a preacher, I, I, I hope they liked it. I, I hope the person you invited liked what I said. No. One concern. God, did I say what you wanted me to say? Only one concern. Only one. Oh, I wish I said the other thing. I had this very nice exposition I had prepared. No. No, no. You die to that. And you only care about what God thinks. This decision I'm making now, my family members are very angry about it. But I know it's God's will. I've struggled for a long time before him. I agreed. I myself, I dragged. But I know it's God's will. A circumcised heart is a heart that has been opened up for God to tear. For our Lord Jesus to walk on. It will be painful. I insist there shall be pain. There's no non-painful circumcision. It doesn't exist. There's no anesthesia that moves the pain of circumcision. When God is circumcising you, you will be in pain. One of the clearest signs God is walking on a person's heart is that there's pain. How long will it last? I don't know. It depends on how tough your heart skin is. Depends on how much you struggle. Some people, he starts. A little bleeding starts. They stop it. Some people drag it for a very long time. But understand this, the quicker your circumcision is, the sooner you will heal. The sooner you heal, the, the, the sooner you're ready to take the land. Are you understanding? So I can assure you, you're wondering what's happening in the body of Christ? It's called circumcision. We're about to take the land. The screams have not, they've, they've barely started. You call it exposures. Yes, you can't be circumcised without lifting. Are you hearing me? The body of Christ must be circumcised. Painful things will come out. Ministries that we like and the ones we don't like. Fake ministries, real ministries, all sorts. Exposures to the left, exposures to the right. One significant thing about just in the last month or so, all of them are international, massive, worldwide renowned. They are a picture. They are a picture. They are not less than three names that are world shaking. The first was Mike Biko. Admired worldwide, followed and loved by millions. 24 7 prayer. Fantastic ministry. Typically considered almost flawless. Then they are bringing things from 20 something years ago. The only challenge is it appears, appears 
as though things were still being covered up. One reason we tell you, don't cover up things, be open. So when someone comes to say something, they say, we knew that since. That's not, he confessed it, she confessed. This, that, that happened in 2018. Now, what, you, have you never seen a big shift? 20 something years later, chat. the ripples, the horror, the shock, the pain. International House of Prayer is not national, it's International House of Prayer. Thank God most Nigerians don't really know, but me, I know. I've known for 20 something years. And then T.D. Jakes, bam. And then T.B. Joshua, bam. Three. Listen, all of these people are known worldwide. They are not, they are not small. They are very big. Most people won't know my big. Why? Because he's in quote on the good side. So there's large that know him, but those, but T.D. Jakes and the others are known because they're in the news. They are out there. They are out there. Exposures must come before circumcision. Are you hearing me? Circumcision is painful. These are signs. Did you hear me? These are signs. That's three witnesses. If you like, don't go with the witnesses. If that three is not enough for you to get the point and you still have time to be supporting or arguing against, you are on your own. Things past, things present are coming out, shaking. People are falling. Shakings are happening. To also check where your heart was, whether you follow men or you follow God. I told you how I was shaken by something that came out of my man of God 20 years ago. The shock I went through, but that was how God prepared me to be able to handle shocks. I'm still in pain whenever I hear things, but you cannot compare it to the first time. Exposures will come. When you have three witnesses, the Bible says you should at least pay attention to the accusation. Anybody that says, don't mind them, don't listen to them. And there's more than three witnesses. Haba. The Bible said we should pay attention when up to two to three witnesses come. Should I follow you? I should follow the Bible. Haba. Someone comes, they come tomorrow and they say, pastor did this to me. He did it. I can say it. And they repeat it to different people openly. Then another person shows up and say, it also happened to me. Don't say it's a lie. You have to, okay, even if you kept quiet for two, trinko. Now they must really, to have that boldness, except all of them are real witches, then that one is not hard to check. Now the Bible doesn't say you should, listen, I explained this thing weeks ago before there was any scandal, before anything happened. How many of you were here when I said, that is when you now start investigating it. Before that, you can brush it off. After that, you investigate it. He didn't say they are guilty because three witnesses came out. He's saying that you should pay attention. Give, don't entertain an accusation. So when up to two or three witnesses come, entertain the accusation. Then you start the process and you tell the leader, is this thing true? Did anything happen? Are you listening? How many of you know, do you know why this is important? Let me tell you why it's important. Because if you don't handle these things, in these last days, if you either believe every accusation against an elder, you believe all. Any accusation against a leader in the body, you just believe. <laughs> then the devil will do one thing. He will just focus on raising people to be accusing men of God. Do you understand? And they will just keep accusing. It's very, do you remember I told you Satan has real agents? That's all. They will just send them. They will just accuse that, that's all they have to do. All the fine girls, they'll just tell you, three of you in that church, go and join that church. After six months, accuse him like that. And then three of them can stand and cry. <laughs> but you did it. And everybody goes, how? You must never, you must understand we have a real devil enemy. On the flip side, and that's why you must look at the accuser too. The Bible says you investigate it. Now, how do you investigate you pray. Let me tell you how some of the investigation will be done in churches like this. This is our own church. And churches that are like ours. Where there's sincerity and God has helped us, morality 
and all that. The test won't be too complicated. Everyone, what does the Bible say? All right. The Bible says that God should judge between us. Father, judge between us. Then someone buys casket and kids. Very easy. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not difficult. At, uh, oh, you guys don't know God at this level. That's why sometimes when I hear the accusation and I'm looking, looking, and looking, nothing happens to the accuser, nothing happens. Oh, God, you're guilty. That's how, I, oh, you, you guys don't know God like this. The Bible says you should ask God to judge. So that's all. It's very easy. Father, if these things be true, judge between me and them. That is all. The only thing I may do, because I have a loving heart and I want unbelievers to be saved, is, Father, may they not die. That's all. That's the only way, at least that one, you will not no be die, you will die. You will live and declare the glory of God. In fact, some you may die, they'll say, see, he has killed them with juju. So you cannot die, you live and declare the glory of God. You must live to come and say, sorry, brethren, <laughs> I know I'm not really a brother and sister. I came from the... I just ran out of the hospital to come and say this. I need to rush back. <laughs> Please pray for me. It's very easy. And to make it faster, you, we, when we pray that prayer, we say in one week, or we put three days. You just put a cap on it. Have I told you in advance what to do? It's very easy. If it comes to you, maybe you're heading a ministry and this happens. Keep it simple. Go up, say it on air. If the accusation is public, if it's in the church, say it in the church. If you're well known, say it out. All right, so this is what will happen. I've been accused. I have said it's not true. They say it's true. I say they are agents of the devil. They say, you know, they plan to do this. I don't know how or when, but I know why. It's the devil. It's a very easy thing. The devil, they've decided to uh, smear me so I can stop ministry. So I would stop doing the work of God. I know I'm not guilty. Now, that's if you're not guilty. I'm only talking about a case where you're not guilty. I know I am not guilty. So I'm asking God to be the judge. On earth, the court of public opinion has decided they've refused to believe. Because, and there are three. So they have met the fulfillment of me being, my, the accusation being entertained. So I'm asking that God, who knows all things, should expose all things. Amen. And let the one who is guilty be dealt with accordingly. It, it shouldn't, I've said it too long. It's just to draft it and read it in 30 seconds. And sit down. And like, I told you about Kumuyi's story. The woman was pregnant. She got to nine months. It became 10 months. It became 11 months. It became, the baby, the, she just kept being pregnant. Till she came and said, hey, it wasn't him. He, I, I lied. You see, uh, what would he have done? How could he have defended himself? God had to defend him. And God does defend people. So when I see sometimes that it's very heartbreaking, but it is circumcision coming on the church. Are you listening to me? That's on a general level, but in the personal level, it's also happening. In the few minutes we have left, I'm going to ask you to pray simple prayer. I repeat, you can't enter the promised land if you're not circumcised. The devil will use it against you. He will attack you as the uncircumcised. You must split your heart open. You must let God reach in and clean out all the filth and dirt and secret things. You must. The secret things are the Lord's. You must give them to him. Let it out. You can't have it inside there. If you do, you'll be like Achan. you go into the promised land with what? What did Achan steal? What was Achan? Did he commit immorality? Did he do impurity? He was an idolater. Simple. Gold, Babylonian garment, that took a cannot. That is what happens when you escape the knife and still enter the promised land. Because of him, they killed his fellow countrymen, his fellow soldiers. You are a threat. You are the basis on which there will be defeats if you carry it into the promised land. That is why there's a Jordan encounter and this Gilgal. The place of rolling away. That's when circumcision happens. That place is called Gilgal. The place of rolling away. As we are praying for one or two minutes, you're asking God, please roll away. Circumcise me. You must permit him. If you will fight and you wish to win, you must permit him to tear open, expose and roll away.
He will expose in different ways. He will allow things happen and you will manifest demons. They say, that's how he exposed. They say, did you see what you did? That's inside you. God uses different circumstances to bring out. You can allow him and it's karma or you can fight. But if you fight him from circumcising you, circumcising you, you will not fight to enter the promised land. I'd like us to stand to our feet.